If you're passionate about guitar, about music, but your desk looks a bit like this, then probably the best investment is to buy more guitars, uh, is to set up a nice little home studio. And the best thing, it doesn't have to be too expensive if you do it right. And this isn't only for those that want to make their own music, also for practicing and jamming, it's awesome. Recording 10 layers of guitars, adding drums, bass, keys, record your guitar for others. Where do you start? What do you need? So let's decorate our little studio. And let's start with the heart of the operation. These days almost everyone makes music and records music on a computer. It gives you so much flexibility and it's definitely the easiest, most versatile approach. And it's very well possible that the Mac or PC you're already using will be perfectly suited for making music. These computers these days are so powerful that if you're starting out, you really don't have to worry about performance too much. A mid-range CPU around eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, and you can easily get started. And this is always a sensitive matter, but I'm a PC guy, a Windows guy, and I happen to be trying out the new MacBook M1 that everyone is raving about, but somehow it conflicted with the next thing on this list. So I just stuck with my good old laptop instead. So let's move on. What if you want to record something? It's either going to be a quarter inch jack or an XLR cable. And there's no chance I can plug these into my laptop right now. Our computer may have a little input or an onboard microphone, but these aren't really the quality we're looking for. So this is where this comes in. At number two, there's the audio interface or sound card. It connects via USB or Firewire, which is most common. Although I guess Firewire is becoming a little bit obsolete and slowly moves towards Thunderbolt, which has even a larger bandwidth than USB 3.0. But that's only available on select Windows devices, by the way, so make sure to check if your computer accepts it. There's always one or more inputs that can be line level for instruments like keys or your guitar amp mother. It's not on a list, so no worry. Let me put that here. And let's just plug the camper into the sound card. We should see it coming into the computer. Input number three and we see it coming in. So apart from the line inputs for these instruments, we also have preamps on board. This makes sure you can run a microphone into it and it will amplify the signal to a level where the computer actually can work with it. Without it, the mic is way, way too quiet. As far as the output goes, you definitely need two, left and right, and a headphone output. More outputs is nice if you want to hook some external effects to it, run sound through it and back to the computer. Maybe experiment with different routings and stuff, that's fun. Furthermore, I love to have MIDI in and MIDI out, so you can sync all the gear you want to your computer or have the computer control different instruments and pedals. So now we got a computer, we got the interface. Now what? If you make and play all that beautiful music, you do want to hear it, right? So at number three, a decent pair of headphones. This is definitely the easiest way. You don't have to sit in a fancy room. You don't have to mind the neighbors, the kids, the parents, the dogs, the cats. Nope, just put these on and go from there. I used the Sennheiser HD25 for a long time until they fell apart sort of, and now I got these fancy new ones. And there's a few different types, like there's over ear or on ear, these are over ear, and there's open back like this one or closed back. And they all have different benefits and downsides. I like open back for listening and for mixing and closed back for recording. And I think over ear for me is a little more comfortable, but in the end it's all personal, so check and make sure which type will suit your needs. Let's just put it in the studio and continue because we've got the computer, the interface, we've got the headphones. Your first hit is right around the corner, but not quite yet. Here is number four and let's talk mics. Without a mic, you would not be able to hear me because over here, right out of shot, I've got a boom mic hanging. It's connected with an XLR cable into the audio interface. 
a different one that is <laughs> and a mic can serve so many different purposes it can record your acoustic guitar your guitar amp your voice or any audio source or instrument you can think of really and i think it's really a must have and it doesn't have to be too expensive it can range from 50 dollars to anything up of 2k even uh, and if you're starting out i should just trying out a few budget options at first so in general there's three different types so a dynamic microphone is really classic for live use but also for loud audio sources like a guitar cap this is really a classic the Shure sm57 we've got the dynamic microphone so this one is a little more sensitive and runs with 48 volts phantom power we called it it runs through the cable into the microphone and this works well for anything quiet loud they do it all acoustic guitars vocals and even guitar caps or drums lovely and then there's a rhythm mic so they are a little less bright and have a more mellow sound due to the little bit rounded off transients so they are more smooth and i like to pair this one up with a condenser or a dynamic mic so it gets you the best of both worlds and I made a video on a cool recording technique I like to use on the acoustic guitar. So you can check it out over here. So there's a whole study you can do about mics, like different pickup patterns, small diaphragm or large diaphragm. Uh, for now, I guess if you just want to use one microphone, I suggest getting a large diaphragm condenser mic and your gold. That can do it all. So let's keep that one in the studio so everything sounds great so far but i'm forgetting a massive thing right now where do we record into you sure can use the voice memo app on your computer right so we said the heart of the operation is a computer now we need something to organize everything on it at number five we find a digital audio workstation and let me open up the computer before you know, the loading takes too long. It's a program that runs on the computer and it lets us record guitars, layer vocals on top, add reverb, delay, EQ, compression, add eight tracks of drums if you wish, run your favorite guitar simulation plugin all at the same time. Really, the sky is the limit. So here you see Ableton Live. That's coming right up. My personal favorite. And let's see what happens if we just record some guitars. All right, here we see the guitar track. So now I can also layer a vocal on top with that XLR cable I just showed you. Oh, uh, by the way, there's one thing you should never ever forget, and that is to hit that like button. Like button, gently, gently, awkward. <laughs> So we can produce, mix, master, everything you need to make and create music. And there's loads of different programs available. Ableton Live, Logic, FL Studio, Cubase, Reason, PreSona Studio One. Uh, some shine in different fields where others may lack a little bit, but ultimately they all sort of do the same thing. So find the program you're comfortable with. So very often a sound card like this will, will ship with a free copy of a light version of your DAW. Um, so that might be a good choice to get started. So doing everything on headphones is doable, but if you're working for a longer period of time, it can get so intense or uncomfortable. Therefore, at number six, I think a decent set of studio monitors is essential. They are active speakers that just try to make the sound as balanced and transparent as possible. So your music will sound great, not only on your system, but on each system for everyone. Great for when you play with something like a Camper or a Helix or a Fractal 2, by the way, if you want to hear yourself nicely. So you plug the cables into the output of the sound card directly into the speaker, and there we are. The size of the monitor should be related to the space where you're using them in. So if your space is small, don't go too big. It just makes no sense. We move on. So I know we're probably all guitarists, but music is more than just guitar. So whenever making it, and here's number seven. I think a little USB or MIDI keyboard can be so helpful. So this is the one I used for the longest time. It's very plasticky, 49 keys, but it works great. So this allows you to play all the sounds you want in your DAW. It simply connects with the USB cable. So now the things I can do is play piano. Oh, uh, by the way, there's one thing you should never ever forget. Or drums. Hit that like button, like button. Gently, 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 gently. Or strings. Oh, uh, by the way, there's one thing you should never ever 
forget. Or a cool synthesizer. That like button. Like button. Gently. Gently. So as you heard, whatever you need to finish that banger. And it's so much easier than drawing in MIDI notes, which is just a painstaking exercise. So just learn like a bit of the piano basics. It's not that hard and it's great for everyone to learn. And from there on out, it's just smooth sailing. All right, so we've got most of the essentials down, I guess, but so handy are the things that just make everything a little bit easier. Like at number eight, mic stands. <laughs> they will save your life, really. I use a short one for guitar amps, a medium one for recording acoustics, for example, and maybe a bigger one for vocals, like standing up. Or if you just want one to do it all, just go for the bigger one and change it so it fits whatever you're tracking. Uh, I found that the cheapest ones, even if they do the job, they sort of either break or they don't stay in one place, so they slowly drift away and that messes up your recording, of course. So maybe go for one class higher and save yourself some troubles. So we've been using them already, but I just want to share it again because they are so easily forgotten at number nine. It's cables. So make sure you've got a mix of everything like USB, jacks, XLR cables, also jacks to XLRs for maybe for your speakers, balanced, unbalanced. It's the best to connect your mics, your gear, your instruments, your amp modeler. It's, it's difficult to have too many cables. And I found that I simply couldn't use something just because I didn't have the right cable or not enough cables. And my goal is always to make just making music as hassle-free as possible. That also means having the things by hand, you need to hook everything up correctly. So now you're looking at your wallet and you think, you said it doesn't have to be too expensive. And indeed it doesn't. All the gear I've got in the studio, I mean, maybe you've seen the tour, you can check it out over here, the full studio tour. It was collected during a period of almost 20 years. So I started out with my hi-fi speakers uh, connected to my old PC using software, free software called Audacity. And seven years ago, I bought this audio interface. Four years ago, I bought this laptop. It's like gradually investing in new gear. A studio isn't built in one day, so upgrade where necessary and add where you're missing things. And the order is different for everyone, where a singer might use a mic from the get-go. If you're a guitarist that records with an app modeler, a direct input or output, you probably can do without it in the beginning. And yes, I said 10 things and I only listed nine so far because number 10 is a sum of all the things you might want to look at if things get serious, like a dedicated studio desk or getting acoustic treatment in your room or a pop filter for your microphone, different preamps, analog recording gear, maybe even a dedicated computer that you can just leave at the desk. Plugging things in and out every time you want to make music can get annoying after time. So. As I said, we try to make everything as hassle-free as possible, as quickly as possible. Anyway, of course I can test everything or every piece of gear around, so I would love for you to give some recommendations. What is good and affordable gear to start out with? Maybe some things I might have missed or tips about gear that you think others can't live without in the studio. Or if you've got a question, maybe we can all help each other out and you know, answer some questions in the comments below. It would be really awesome to see. Anyway, thank you so much for watching everyone. And I really do hope this video inspires you some bit to like, to really start to work on your own music. You're never too old for that. It's never too late. You're never too, you know, just start doing it. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, that's what a guitar is meant for. Make music. Cheers. Cheers.